Now, I know there are a bunch of appealing things about learning how to code. It helps you build really cool programs, whether they do something really dumb or help you apply to jobs with the click of a button. Plus, knowing how to code helps you get into top high paying jobs in the tech industry, filled with boatloads of cash, insane perks, and endless free swag. And coding is a perfect excuse for staying up late into the night and hacking away. And I received a lot of questions asking, how do I learn how to code? So I wanted to dedicate this video to sharing my tips on how to learn to code as a beginner. And no, you don't need to dish out any money or go to any special school. In fact, right after watching this video, you can start coding immediately. Specifically, I'll be going over four key steps in this video. First, I'll be going over the best courses to learn coding fundamentals. Second, I'll be going over how to pick a personal project. Third, how to best use the resources available to help you out. And fourth, how to use these skills out in the real world. So let's see what it takes to make you into a programmer. As I mentioned, you don't need to go to school, pay any money, or even leave your house to learn how to code. All you need is a computer, some time, and a will to learn. And depending on how you learn best, there are gonna be a few different courses that'll help you learn the fundamentals of coding. This includes things like Code Academy, Coursera, YouTube, and OpenCourseWare. So let's explore all these options and see which one would work best for you. When I first started to code, I actually used Code Academy to make my first website. Sites like Code Academy and Free Code Camp are great because they eliminate the unnecessary barriers that can be confusing to new programmers, like picking which text editor to use, learning how to use terminal, etc. So here you can basically pick a course that you like, maybe a fundamentals of coding course or something language specific. Then they will guide you through a series of interactive activities to learn each concept. This is a great option for those who want to dip their toes into coding for the first time in a hands-on manner, but still want some structure to what they learn. But if you want to get into the nitty gritty of CS concepts, you won't find much here since everything is very surface level. Suppose you do better in a structured classroom environment with opportunities for collaboration and regular assignments. Then something like Coursera or edX will be your best bet. They have free courses that provide you with a structured classroom-like experience while learning these topics. And they expand to more advanced topics like machine learning, algorithms, and cybersecurity. In fact, in my college machine learning class, we had to watch videos from the Coursera machine learning course by Andrew Ng. And since you're watching this video, you already know the treasure trove of knowledge that is YouTube. Say you want to design your own adventure and study what interests you the most. In that case, YouTube is your best bet. There are a couple of movie length videos by Free Code Camp that cover coding fundamentals. If you're getting into more advanced territory, you can get inspiration from some really cool projects in the form of tutorials or devlogs. For a beginner, these videos can sometimes be hard to follow since they're usually made for people with some coding background. But once you have your fundamentals down, this is a great place to go. And a fusion of YouTube and Coursera is MIT's OpenCourseWare. This is an online consortium of courses from MIT. They provide you with a syllabus, readings, lectures, assignments, and even exams. So if you enjoy that college-like experience and want to be taught by some of the best teachers, this is a great option. And since this is MIT, it is bound to be more difficult and may feel more overwhelming than some of the other options. But this is great if you're seeking that challenge. Completing a course will give you the fundamentals to think like a programmer. So by this point, you should understand things like functions, classes, variables, and data structures. To solidify those skills and have fun while doing so, you should start a personal project. And this really can be in anything that you like. When you go into making your first project, you'll fall into one of two categories. Either you have a bunch of ideas rushing into your head, or you're struggling to think of the perfect idea. If you fall into the first category, then that's great. Remember to think about the scope of the project and make sure you don't overload what you have to do. If you fall into the second category, that's fine too. In fact, I still struggle to this day to think of cool project ideas. And the good thing is, there are a bunch of places for you to find project inspiration. One of those is Reddit. There are a bunch of subreddits where people show off their projects, including r slash programming, Python, data is beautiful, and web dev. People also sometimes make app requests on r slash apps, so you can always attempt one of those. There are also sites like dev posts, and of course YouTube where people can highlight some of their projects. Hint hint, you're looking at one. When you're doing your research and find a project you like, you can try adding your own flair to it, maybe changing the domain it's used in or a particular feature. If you still can't think of something original, you can also try to recreate the project or a part of it. Say you have a more competitive spirit. Then there's lots of challenges and coding competitions that might be up your alley. There are some sites centered around interview prep, like Leak Code or Hacker Inc. Then there are some harder battle type competitions that even have cash prizes. Or if you're into data science or machine learning, then sites like Kaggle have challenges that use curated data sets. And they also have cash prizes. 
But most importantly, just looking around in your day-to-day life and trying to identify problems that you want to solve will lead you to the most interesting project ideas. If you're learning how to code for the first time, it can feel really overwhelming. It's like learning a new language and being thrown into a foreign country to practice it. But the key here is not to allow yourself to struggle with a question for too long by yourself. There are so many resources and people online just like you who want to help answer your questions. The top two resources I'd suggest are Stack Overflow and Reddit. Stack Overflow is a great resource when you have code-related questions. Maybe something isn't compiling or you're getting a weird error message. If you just copy and paste that error message or a somewhat detailed description of your problem into Google, you'll definitely find that someone else has asked a similar question and hopefully someone has answered. If you have broader questions, Reddit is also a good place to go, including r slash learn programming and potentially r slash CS career questions. Again, be mindful of searching for whether your question has already been asked, but if it hasn't, then asking can be a great way to contribute to the community. By this point, you have those coding fundamentals down and have a project or two under your belt. In order to continue honing in on those skills, I would suggest continuing to work on projects that will expand your skill set. The goal here is to have a portfolio that you feel proud about sharing with your friends. And from here, you can apply your skills out in the real world. This could take shape as freelancing, applying to jobs, etc. Wherever your path takes you, make sure to continue sharpening up your skills and learning more. Computer science is an ever-changing field, and even with a degree, your knowledge can become outdated after just a few years. So wherever you are in your CS career, you may just have to come back to these steps to freshen up your knowledge. And that's it for today's video. I hope this gave you the confidence to take that first step towards learning how to code. And if you have any questions, wherever you are in the process, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.